how is it going youtube well again say we will be talking about totems i'll be giving some sort of like a very easy path that you can follow especially in the vanilla content of the game um all the totems and and it's going to be basically netting out really good recipes really good amise uh perhaps some like good rare drops such as like you know ancient hearts maybe even celestial lotus depending on if you're hitting the celestial totems and at the same time it's going to be dropping quite a lot of legendaries per hour um this is sort of like the path that i've been following on stream uh, recently and one thing out of the way that i should say that please remember, remember to leave a like uh to the video and i do stream arpg content over at twitch.tv slash mulligans if, if you would like to check me out uh you're more than welcome to same goes for subscribing to the channel as well you see a lot of arpg content especially grim dawn uh nowadays or now a years even so the pathing i'll basically show on the map at first and then afterwards i'll i'll try to demonstrate as well the first place i'm going to talk about is going to be the warden's lift rift i tp there i go both ways so i go towards like the start of the axe one uh i, I walk backwards basically there's one totem spawn over there and at the same time you get a lot of like aether crystals Waldron spawn point is there as well. So that being said, I should probably mention that Ethereal and Chthonians, you kind of would like to be Nemesis while doing this farm. Simply because we're going to be hitting some places where these two can actually spawn and they're rather easy to kill and they, they give you they are trying to give you recipes. They have good MIs and at the same time they drop at the very least one legendary as far as I can as far as I can tell. So after walking towards like the backside, I TP to the Warden Lab one more time. I go go towards Warden this time. And um, over there, I basically just kill the heroes, you know, build up to the Warden. There's, I think, one or two, maybe, uh, totem spawn points. And then on top of that, there's another spawn point for Waldron. Actually, there are multiples, unless I'm mistaken, there are like three spawn points for Waldron. So hopefully he's going to be up there to kill that Nemesis as well. Another one in Act 1 is going to be the East Marsh. This is kind of like the bonus one. There are two Celestial Spawn Points, Celestial Totems, that is. They're both on, like, the um, new side areas to the East Marsh. And they both have, like, a small little boss over there. They they have their each, each individual uh, MIs as well. If you would like to check them out, uh, feel free to. So I don't usually hit both of the bosses. I just check out, like, which totem is up from my map. And I kill the boss that is in that side area as well. I don't even touch the other side area. So as far as I can tell, there's always one Celestial Totem up in East Marsh every time. And there's another Totem up inside the East Marsh. Like the normal um, map of the East Marsh as well. As far as I can tell, that's what I have been getting to. So one thing that I want to cover right here, as this reminded me, is that like if you pay attention to the map, a um, couple of stuff about the Totems, okay? When you TP into a map, if you have discovered the location that the totem spawns, your big map actually shows it to you from very far away. So in most cases, you won't even need to, you know, path around so much uh, to, to, to see if the totem is up there or not, because you will be able to see it on your map. However, this is very important. If you have it undiscovered, such as like this over here, you know, I've never been there before. The only way that you can see uh, if, the, if a totem is up there or not is using your minimap. And for that one, you will need to get a lot closer than how your normal map would show. So let's say if there's a totem on my cursor right over there, I would be able to see it from here because it's, you know, open. But if it was right over here, I wouldn't be able to. I would be able to see it on my minimap right over there with, a, with an icon showing, you know, towards the northern side. But I would need to get much closer than this to, to see it to begin with. So if this is like your first one, try to open the places that I've mentioned or at the very least walk towards there to make sure that like there's no totem if you have ever hit that totem before or if you hit it you know with this after this video then you won't need to check your minimap at all you will be able to like look at your big map every single time and you will be seeing that totem there so after the east marsh the next point is going to be arcovian foothills it's possible that there's nothing here it's also possible there are going to be two of them uh one towards the right the other one might be towards like the um towards like the upside over there to the northern side the one, that one i didn't really find it yet actually but it's open i'm checking it every single time as far as i know from your map the big map when you tp into the arco in foothills you don't need to path at all because you should be able to see uh where they are if they are there that is the twin falls is basically the bread and butter of this entire run it's insane in this place there are two celestial spawns one of them is on this side area 
of uh, of Twin Falls was like the northwest west kind of thing. The other one is exactly north, which is you know connecting uh, by this bridge. So you kind of need to open this bridge coming from like the Pine Barren side first. You didn't open it. So you, you start Pine Barrens instead of entering Tyrant's Hold. Try to go towards like the east side of the map and see like what happens. You basically can repair this bridge over here. And then thanks to that, you can go towards there afterwards every time you're doing this run. And there's a Celestial Spawn, uh, Celestial Totem Spawn, I should say, as well. So as far as I can tell, again, in Twin Falls, there's always one Celestial Totem up. So it's either one or... But maybe it's possible that like either one is going to be down or all, both of them are going to be down. I'm not really sure. So apart from these, there's obviously the beehive that I usually hit. What else of like bees and a boss inside as well? The bee boss has its own MI too. Um, and then on the southern side of the Twin Falls portal, which is like towards like the um, Kilrian's dungeon, the undead population side, there are also three different uh, totem spawn points. Those you know, one of them is always up, always. It's more like a normal totem, not necessarily a celestial one, but sometimes it can be extremely rewarding, nevertheless. The next one that I'll mention is going to be the Rotting Croplands. In here, when you jump in from your big map again, you'll be able to see if they're up or not. As far as I can tell, two of them are extremely um, common. One of them is like northern side, very close to the waypoint. The other one is like towards like the western side, a little bit further. So if it's like your first time, you will need to path it. I'll show it to you on this video anyway. Another one is going to be the Cronley Cave. Uh, and there's Cronley's hideout. They have three different spawn points. One of them is always up, as far as I can tell. And there are lots of heroes to kill. Also, this is a good place to like farm the Cronley Infamy, as you know. So, um, just sec. Okay, I almost sneezed, but yeah. So it's it's very good to hit for like Cronley's uh, infamy, and it, at the same time, you know, Cronley is very easy to kill at the same time as the boss. And there are like a couple of bees, sometimes a couple of packs of bee heroes, uh, some dynamites, pretty much it. Like it's a, it's a very fast run for me, I usually take this down, definitely. But, you know, the last three mentions, including the Cronley run, it is kind of up to you if you like to run this or not. They're not necessarily as good as the, the, the ones that I've already mentioned. Uh, one of my least favorite ones is going to be over here. You teleport into the Necropolis interior rift. You go towards like the Logarian dungeon. You don't you don't really go inside, but like in that small little circle area, you should be able to see the entire map if you have opened it before. And um, from there, you will be basically able to see see like which totem is up. Uh, if you don't have the map up yet, what I would suggest you to do is a couple of times is, is basically, you know, get close to the locations and, you know, pay attention to your minimap. And when you see the totem, go open it up. And next time you won't need to do this for that specific totem. But for the others, you might still want to do it from your minimap until you hit every single totem. But at the very least, have your entire map open. So this is a, this is a big zone. So you kind of want to be able to spot the totems from your entire big map. After this rift, I kind of like to go back to this rift instead, instead of like walking south, because I, I do I do like walking north from here instead. Um, between these two rifts in the Necropolis, guys, there's there's Waldron spawn again. So if you if you haven't find them inside the uh, Warden's lab, you'll be able to find the Ethereal uh, Nemesis over here as well. If he spawns there, obviously. And on top of that, as far as I can tell, there's always one at the very least. Um, totem up in that necropolis place as well. So the last place that I will mention is going to be in Bloodgrow, which is really my least favorite. I definitely do hit like the southeast side a little bit towards towards like this side where where I kill Bolvar, where I sort of search for Banyar as well, the the Onion Nemesis, and um, you know you the good part is that you're also capable of finding some like. Chthonic Seal of Bindings in here, which is really good. Instead of, you know, postponing it and farming it later on. Bits and pieces here and there, getting it from this farm is really good. Same goes for, like, the Ethereal Crystals on the Infamy. And then on top of everything, you also try to get some, like, Nemesis skills as well. So that is really what I enjoy doing in Grim Grim Dawn. You know, like, having such a run that is going to be covering multiple different of problems that is going to be, you know, postponed or, like, Armed individual later on is just covering everything at one run, so it's it's good to be hitting this as well. There's also another uh, totem, or maybe even multiple, towards like the western side of the portal as well, which is I'm I'm not going, but I'll be showing it 
on on this video as well so this this is like basically the entire thing that i'll show we're going to be running the entire thing and um yeah let, let me know let me know how you find it so we're playing a purifier i recently made a build guide out of him you can definitely check out my channel if you would like to or if you're interested in the build that i'm playing right now it's pretty strong it's really tanky extremely good screen clear um yeah too much and lots of fire definitely lots of fire and burn so this is the first totem you take the modern lab rifts this one and then you start walking towards the back instead like this way i'll try to not turn my camera so much but i'm quite obsessed with turning my camera so excuse me if i'm turning it too much for the sake of the guide i think it's not the greatest thing to turn the camera so much so That's a good drop. So during this run, I usually try to kill every single eth ethereal crystal on the floor simply because, you know, they're, they're pretty good for your account. You can even craft dynamites with them. And um, right now in this kind, I'm not going to do it simply because, like, you know, I would like to save a little bit of, of your time on the video. But what I'll tell you is that where I stop in this run i stop right over here guys by these like three little rooms simply because sometimes waldron is inside one of them so this is his like last spawn point and then afterwards i'll tp back to the warden's lab and this time we will build up towards that warden one thing that i would like to tell you is i want to turn this towards northern side there we go one thing that i'll i would like to tell you is that um if your map is open like, especially in this side, definitely, guys, check your map out. It's like, the, the this place is pretty big, and you would like to see where the totem did spawn, at the very least, yeah. Let's kill this guy. It's... If you're familiar with my kegs, by the way, I did manage to find the upgrades that I would like to find. So we're in a good spot now with this character. Like, there's there's not that many upgrades that I could make to this character anymore. So that's also why the character is feeling so strong right now. I'm really enjoying it. And uh, and if you're a new player to Grim Dawn, this, this build is in fact uh, a beginner-friendly build. Because you don't necessarily need specific legendaries for it to kick in. Uh, and it has a good build up as well. As in, like, you, you can get relatively strong uh, with this guy. All you need is basically this offhand, and then it kicks in. So it's pretty good in that case. If you're curious about the mods that I'm playing with, I'm using Grim Internals right now, which is also picking up uh, the quest items. It's also picking up, like, the components. You don't necessarily need this add on anymore. Or the mod anymore for auto picking up the components. Um, at the same time, it's showing me boss names and boss HPs. Say in in a different, you know, let's say, font than than the original Grim Dawn. Hey, Fiend Gaze Tome. That's a really good drop for me. I'm actually curious about this item. Nice. I was lucky. So the second place that I mentioned was in East Marsh. So we're gonna take the portal. To the Barwich village we start walking towards the southeast towards this road and it will connect to the bridge that you need to repair another mod that i'm using is called a rainbow or grim dawn so this is the east march after the bridge and those are the only two mods that i'm using by the way the third one is the item assistant but you won't be seeing it on this video that's all. So one of the side areas is just by basically following the road. And if there is, if the totem is up, you should be able to see it already from here. Um, I am going to get it a bit closer just in case, you know, just to make sure. I think the totem spawns somewhere around there my, where my cursor is. And the small boss, like the minibus, is inside there. So let's go to the second side area now since this one wasn't up. But as I said, if I am not mistaken, there's obviously, I mean, sorry, there's um, th there's a totem up in this East Marsh almost every single time also. And that's even like mentioning the Celestial one. The Celestial one is up. 
so I am still not wrong when it comes to like this one up every time when it comes to like celestials I'm taking lots of damage here right now that's a lot of damage over time let's stand on our seal to stop that damage that was crazy I think maybe I had like reflect or something. I'm not so sure. Maybe I was burning myself. Right, so the Celestial Totems can actually be... The burn that I'm inflicting to myself is insane. Celestial totems can actually be quite uh, sweaty sometimes, just so you know, but like, you know, you're not necessarily on a timer at all, guys. Just like, take your time. If you're not, if you're not really like comfortable like, around them, just kite them for a bit, try to pull only one of them. That's okay, you know? Th this is a very good spawn right now, by the way. Like, we have already gotten two legendaries by the looks of things. We have, by the sound of things, I should say, even. That, that sound is basically every time. It's Scream Internals that's doing it every time that we get a legendary but on top of everything it's the third one now on top of everything we have also gotten a celestial lotus which is arguably the rarest you know crafting material in this game so this is insane loot already in this playthrough like, already insane loot oh the barbaros chasseurs i don't know how to pronounce that that is insane the barbaros pants that is insane I love it. I didn't have this yet in this playthrough. Th th this is crazy. I love it. All right. So, um, just for the sake of checking if there is, you, you see like how far I can see the totem from though. Like this is, this is crazy. So this portal over here is in fact I think the Barwich outskirts. If I wanted to take this as well, so this is yet another one that you could hit actually. So if you have this open on your map, you'll be able to see this from this distance. But if it was inside the dark, like the darkness, the fog of four, so to speak, then you would need to get close to it and see it on your minimap. Or, you know, preferably completely open it. So just for the sake of like, you know, seeing if there's yet another totem in, in, in this East Marsh, I'm going to go ahead and open the places that I haven't been. And meanwhile, I've, I'll, I'm doing this. I'll actually like look at my minimap as well, so that like we see if I get close to a totem. But I'm kind of expecting to not have anything up anymore. We'll see. This place connects there, I think, right? Yep, there's one. You see this? Like, I saw it on my minimap. You see that? The ancient savage one. So it's not open on my big map. So I I'm pretty sure I'm right, guys. There's always one in this big zone. And then there's one up either in either one of the, you know, celestial spawn points. This is an ancient one, by the way. And now that, like, I've, you know, discovered this one also, like, I won't need to come close to this to see it spawn at all. That's the best part about it. So you you might want to like open your maps a little bit for the places that I've shown. Definitely. Right. So the next place that we will go to is going to be Arcovian Foothills. This one is extremely simple and easy. You just open your map as you come here, and you can see it. As you can see. Forsaken Spirit. So, uh, if I put north on the top of my map so that it's not confusing, uh, this is basically the Devil's Crossing side. That's the Devil's Crossing bridge. And then the totem is right over there. I am suspecting that there's another totem spawn somewhere around here as well, but it, it was not up for me yet, just so you know. I, I, I believe that there are two spawn points here. One of them is this one. And it's also possible that like there's not going to be any here. So... I've been here multiple times where there wasn't any spawn point at all here, just so you know. But there wasn't any totem spawn, I should say, yeah. I love this gig, honestly. This is extremely good. Um, it, it turned out to be extremely good, even though it's like my starting character. Grey Knights. 
So the next place that we will go to is going to be... Let's go to Cronley's hideout, actually. Let's see if I can see it already. I cannot see a totem yet. So one of the totem spawns is right next to me right now, like right over there, downstairs. 100%. The other ones, um, there are two spawn points very close to Kronne, which are seemingly down, actually. Is this going to be the first run that I have ever, like, never found a totem, I should say. I actually think so. Like, this time there's no total map in Kronny's hideout. That's very surprising. I've never seen this happen before. Yeah, so inside the Kronny's cave, guys, there's this dynamite spawn every time here. It's just like whatever, but sometimes also... Uh, in this game, it's just not. It's like, we're being quite unlucky in the Scrum Lease Cave, honestly. But sometimes this B place on over here, the B, uh, the B pack, it can have, like, all the way up to five heroes. I'm not even kidding. I might die here. This bloody Jack, I hate her. What's my bleed resistance? 45%? That's okay. She's apparently really susceptible to knockback, guys. She shouldn't, like, she couldn't get up. But bloody Jack is a little bit scary, just so you know. Trust me. If your bleed resistance isn't over caps, like she can absolutely destroy you. So this is where I stop usually, basically after killing Cronley. And like I'm telling you, if I have done this like 25 times, I I've seen the totem spawn like 24 times now, and this is the only run that I have. So, just judging from this video, um, I can give it a couple of attempts for yourself as well. What did we just lose, guys? This thing. Chilling grip of Hagarad. Pretty good. I didn't necessarily count how many legendaries we are getting. I wish I did, because I think this is turning out to be a lucrative run. You could definitely make this a lot faster too. So the first thing that I do over here is we're gonna go in go north through the bridge and check out if the celestial totem is up. It doesn't seem like it is though. The spawn point is somewhere around there, I want to say. Somewhere there, like very close. So I should have been able to see it by now. I'm going to go back now. We could just TP back to Swim Falls, I suppose. If you want, you could also kill the boss. The boss is like inside... Uh, I think inside here, in fact, this little circular place. He has like an MI for himself too. So the second Celestial is going to be right over there on the side arena. If I put north over there on my map like this. So this is like the default look, I think right over there that's a nice pack and the celestial totem is up this is good so 90% of the time one of the celestial is up but I did see that uh, like in one of my games uh, none of them was, so. But the same doesn't necessarily apply for the normal ones. I think a normal one towards, like, the uh, Killerian dungeon, when you go, like, southern side of, um, what's it called again, the Twin Falls. One of them is 100% up every time. I have a feeling like I'm burning myself or something every single time. I don't even know how I pull that off, but... Let's hope there's no priest around to him. this guy back to full HP. There we go. I have been incredibly lucky this one. This is absolutely nuts. We have gotten uh, this pistol right over here. More ghouls, mortality. Vitality with necromancer, occultist and nightblade pluses. I 
I gotta get out of there even though I used... That's not good actually, I'm not liking this right now. I'm not liking that at all either. I'd like that sound though. Right. Temporal Tempest, legendary one-hander for Word of Pain. It's the first time I'm finding it too. That's a really cool part about Grim Internals is that like not only the sound, I don't really care about the sound all that much. It's good to not miss an item on the floor, that's that's one thing. And I do like the Diablo 2 sound effects, but uh, it's not for that. Another cool thing is that when you get an item for the first time, it actually shows on the top of your screen that like this is, this is a new uh, transmog basically for you. really like that and i think i do prefer when it comes to like room internals is um so that was it all right and it when it comes to like the you know the adjustable or like customizable i should say the health bars as you can see like i'm not showing the uh you know the minions the champions i'm showing only the heroes and and the and the font is a little bit bigger and clearer to see in my opinion so the, for the last time we're gonna tp to twin falls and this time we'll go to the southern side uh, in this video, I won't hit the, the beehive, but the beehive is right over in my cursor over there, if you would like to hit it, and it's a good spot to farm, in my opinion, it's extremely good. Like, you should definitely hit it. Right now, for the sake of the video, to be a little bit faster than this, I'm not gonna do it. So, couple of spawn points, guys. I said three, and I think there are three. One of them is here, the other one is right there, and the third one is right over here, okay? So, if this one is up, you could actually come from this angle instead is what I have been doing at least. Only for this one I usually come from this angle but as you can see the beehive by the way like even the entrance has multiple uh, heroes and most of the time it's really lucrative to enter there. You should definitely go to the beehive every time you're doing this. And the entrance is right there on the lower ground. There will be fire. Alright, another blue item. So Twin Falls is done. The next one on the line is going to be Rotting Cropland. I do believe that like the... Um, I kind of feel like there are lots more here to find. So one of them is like close to that place, guys. I, like, I, I, I believe that, like, I need to check around a little bit in Rotting Croplands, actually. I'm a little bit lazy about it. I have been. So, perhaps check it out yourself as well. There might be totems that I didn't necessarily hit. The two that I have been hitting is one of them is right there, I think. Or right here, in fact, actually. Right here on my cursor. And the other one is right there. So, those are the two that I have been checking. There might be more. I'm not going to check it out right now, but those two are the only ones that I've been checking, basically. They're not up. Because if they were up, I would have been able to see it on my big map. So for, for you, make sure that like you, you discover this place before going away. The next one we will go to is going to be Necropolis. Let's kill this guy, actually. Right over here. I am not that confident about these spawn points over here, but you should probably discover literally everything here, because uh, if I'm not mistaken, there are multiple spawn points here, guys. There's, there's one over there, one over here, one maybe around here, because, yeah. But once you discover everything, like, as you go north a little bit from the waypoint, you'll be able to see which one is up. And I think there's always only one up, as far as I can tell. Big boy. <laughs> Look at the debuffs I have right now. That was an underwhelming drop, wasn't it? Next one will go to Gates of Necropolis. And we are really hoping at this point that Voldron is going to be spawning here. <laughs> so that I don't um I don't miss him on this playthrough. He has definitely different uh the different spawn places as well, other than this. Like he can spawn in um 
Port Valery, for instance. So I don't, I don't really go there. I still didn't cover everywhere here either, guys. But as you can see, the like I am here and I can see that spawn over there, and that's only because like we have been there before. So you gotta be, you gotta be opening your map in this place as well if you wanna hit this place. Because there are multiple different spawn places. I'm pretty sure there's one towards like the right side of the map as well. Let's go towards it. They let me move. Is he really shooting me from like up top? I don't mind. I can. Be careful. He didn't get to cast it. <laughs> Alright, pretty underwhelming drops at the end. So the last place that we will hit is gonna be in blood grow i'll show both of the places even though i'm not necessarily doing this one all that often i think this is like my least favorite so as you can see we can already see one from here that's that's a good spawn i think there's one towards like northern side as well not 100 percent on this but there's one towards like all the way towards um west southwest perhaps kind of and there's also another one like in this hidden area you can reach the hidden area by basically following the river all the way south and it just like enter from right there i think there's a totem spawn there's also a big chest usually but i don't think it's worth it it's just a too long way um benyar spawns on the right side of this portal so he like goes towards the southeast to enter the benyar side and he spawns somewhere around here um let's for the sake of the video let's check towards the west southwest and um see if there's like any totem around here perhaps even like build up towards here a little bit not really, we have nothing. But as I said, like 100% two spawn points, one over there and one over here in the hidden area. Now we go south. So the only reason I don't really prefer the southern side or, or, or blood grow, I should say, is because of like these little nuisance rocks. You know, they're, they're changing every time according to your session. And sometimes it's, it's this passage that is open, sometimes it's this one, sometimes it's that one that's open, and then it cannot be blocked over there. Then you gotta go like here, and then it can be blocked here, then you go here. So stuff like that is a little bit of an inconvenience while you're making a farm like this, obviously. It could get maybe frustrating or something, but yeah, I still come to this place. I still do. It's just that like it's not my favorite at all. I'm gonna check. At the very least, I'm gonna try and like find Bolvar if I could easily. The rift entrance and Bolvar. So this is why, where I would stop basically with this one as well. Since I found Bolvar, I kind of like check the map, and at the same time, uh... so he also dropped like a Chthonic Seal of Binding. I think there it is. That's that's nice. And we have checked like if, if ben Benyar was there too. As I was saying, this is this avoid touched one. It's a normal one that is spawned. It's just, if you want to go to this, basically it's just from like this road, as I said, in the hidden area from like this. this there's like a small waterfall that you can go underneath or something. Basically, yeah. But I usually don't, don't go there. I'm not going to do it right now either. So this is pretty much it, you guys. I'm going to be coming up with like more farming videos, including the Forgotten Gods and the... Uh, Ashes of Mammoth as well. And there will be some like flower farming guides too. I really hope this was useful and that you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like. Remember to subscribe as well for more ARPG content. Uh, much love to all of you. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next video. Peace out.